Hi everybody, how are you doing? Jo here again. I just thought I'd come in Tuesday, so we need another little crafty catch-up. How are you keeping? I hope you're having a good week. Um, I know unfortunately some of you aren't, so um, it's nice that we can come and have a, a bit of crafting time together. So before we start, if you need a big hug, here's one. The whole group are going to give you a big hug. And the second thing is, don't forget, get that brew because we're going to have a nice catch up. And today we've got some new things to play with. So for those of you who aren't aware, but I can't believe there's anybody who isn't aware, Lavinia have brought out some new sprays. Now these have been two years in the making, absolutely fabulous. There's two different ranges. The first is an acrylic spray. These are fabulous, permanent spray absolutely brilliant to use i've just got two colors here today and i want to show you how just with two colors i can create fabulous pieces of work but also sneakily tracy put into the mix these mysticals and these have got a mica in them so these are a mica spray and these move with water so again a great addition to the mix and i've only got two blue moon and a chestnut bay and again i want to show you various ways of using them before i start i just want to say i've got a non-stick craft mat down just because i don't want to put any of my spray on my lavinia mat so that's just me you know belt and braces um and the other thing with these sprays having mica i mean a couple of things first i always recommend shaking any sprays um, and I tend to do it side to side there are various trains of thought of this and you know me I always say you go off what works for you um, I think sometimes in the craft industry people can get hung up so much on rules I know when I started I used to put things on and people would message me going oh you can't do that and it really shot my confidence um, and I think sometimes by playing you come up with new techniques I mean hints and tips are great but I think it's awful when people actually tell other people what they can and can't do so all advice is greatly received but then you decide what you think so from I've sort of researched it and the majority of people say to shake them side to side but like I say you go with whatever works for you I'm certainly not one of those people that preaches with your mysticals, now these have got the mica in and you can see the mica will settle. So they definitely need a good shake before you start. And literally a couple of seconds and you'll see that mica has infused in there. But the main thing for me is when I finished using these, what I tend to do is fill this with water and I go into my utility room at my sink. And I would just take the end of this into the water, take the lid off and just spray on the side of my sink. You could use a piece of card if you wanted, um, make a spare background. And I just spray until that water's gone up through the nozzle and come out and then it's running clear. I hope that makes sense. So that that way I'm just spraying water. Obviously be careful not to knock this over. And it just helps clear any mica because I don't want that little nozzle there to clog up with mica. And for me, that's something that I've discovered in the past that can happen. So a little thing I just wanted to point out for me, that's what I always do at the end whenever I've had a play session. So I'm hoping that'll help. And again, just a an old pot, you know, good excuse to eat one of those nice puddings. Well, it is for me anyway. Now, the sprays. Oh, so much you can do with them. Got to be honest, love creating backgrounds. This isn't a video on backgrounds because I know Tracy's done a, a lot of fabulous technique videos with the backgrounds. So I don't want to redo what she's already done because, you know, why would I? She's amazing. So again, I just have a spray session, use my spray booth. And literally, um, the one thing I will say is make sure you've got plenty of card because you will go through card. And I love to let them dry. Don't be very opinionated almost as you're doing them. Once they dry, that's when you really see. Um, and I love to have a stash of these. Look, these were just offcuts. But that, I'm thinking I'm going to cut a tag out of that. But these will be great for those days when your mojo's gone and you don't know what to do. And you'll pick one of these up and suddenly think, oh, right. Oh, a seahorse on there. I'm thinking, yeah, underwater. You know, and they're perfect for that. 
so backgrounds all right let me file those on the floor um i made a tag when i was making the backgrounds and again just stamp that up and beautiful to stamp on top of. Some ladies have messaged me asking, and I've just used my Versafine Clay. I know normally on acrylic spray, especially acrylic paint, you would use an archival ink pad. I've got to be honest, I haven't had problems with the Versafine Clay, and that's the one I tend to use, so that's the one I'm sticking with. But again, you use with whatever suits you. Little card here just to show you where I've done a resist. So again, remember that technique, stamping first with your embossing powder and then adding your spray behind. So much you can do with them. But we're not going to do that today. So now I've shown you what we're not going to do. I'll show you what we are going to do. We're actually going to paint with our sprays because like I say, I just wanted to show you something a bit different. So we're going to create this design and we're going to be doing some painting with them. Like I say, Thought we'd do something a bit different so we're going to start off with a piece of this multifarious card and i buy the a4 sheets but i've come in with the um the off-white sort of the creamy color i just thought it would be nice for a change and i've cut mine down because i'm using a five by seven card i've gone for four, four and a half inches by six and a half inches so that i've got room for my matting and layering and we're going to start off with some stamping. I have already put my black Sharpie line round because I thought you don't want to see me doing that. We want to get into using these fabulous sprays. Now, the stamp I'm going to use today is this beautiful one called Seed Heads. And again, I thought I've not used this for a while. And I love this because we've got a silhouette and an open one. So I'm thinking perfect for painting. And we'll just do a little bit of stamping. We're going to concentrate on this bottom corner. So I'm going to stamp the open one first. Now, again, depending on how much actual painting you want to do, obviously depends on how many times you, um, you stamp your design. But, I, I mean, you know me, I love to just sort of relax and lose myself in the world of, of painting. Now, this one, I'm going to put the first one there, sort of from the corner. And then we'll just add a couple more. Now, if I add one next to this, it almost tessellates. Look, I like that shape. It looks like it was built to go next to itself. I don't want to... I want it to almost look random, so I don't want to put an open one followed by a silhouette followed by an open one because I think that would look too contrived. So if I put two open ones together, but I like that shape they have. Oh, I've over-inked. I am a tinker for doing that. But again, that's one of my little quirks. And I'm just mindful that I do do it, so I just keep an eye on it. And I think we'll have one more up this edge. See, it's funny, some stamps I seem to over stamp more than others. Over ink, I mean. And then I'm going to have one more, just want to alter the angle there. So it's almost fans out. Now. We come in with the, the silhouette one and we'll just add a, a couple of these. Have you got this stamp? I must admit, I bought this quite a few years ago and um, did a total workshop using it. And it's one of those that I love, but I don't tend to use that often, so it's nice to just get it out. I don't know about you, but I do that and I think, oh, why haven't you used this? I love this. It's that thing about favourites, isn't it? I always feel it's wrong to say I've got favourites, but I do have. But again, they change. And of course, Tracy keeps bringing out beautiful new designs and then she gives me a new favourite. 
Now, again, if you're not sure, remember, use your acetate to just see. Oh, actually, that looks nice there. I was going to go up there, but I prefer that. I'm glad I did that. So let's just think about there. Now, if I turn that round, I'm thinking, yeah, just a tiny bit there just to finish that off. Think of the silhouette, just a tiny bit peeping on. It's so nice to have designs coming off the edge. And sometimes just that tiny little bit there can make all that difference. And it just gives that continuity. I don't want to go, the temptation would be to put another black there. But to me that would look too symmetrical. And, and I don't want that. So... I'll get Mr Inky Binky out and uh, oh and I have to say thank you a lady and I'm sorry I can't remember your name put a lovely comment on our group saying that she was crafting with her granddaughter and and she said could you pass me the Inky Binky I just thought how adorable oh honestly it made my day it was such a lovely comment and it's so lovely to have comments that just you know make you smile So let's add a sentiment. I'm going to go for the um, Just For You, and that's from the Heartfelt Verses. I think that's quite a, a sort of generic sentiment. Now, the hardest bit for me is going to be stamping this straight. So I might have to put my head over the camera, so I do apologise. And I want it there. I don't want it too far away from the design. The temptation sometimes can be to put it a long way away, but you want it to sort of flow so, again, I'm going to give that a blot because although that's a stamping done, you know me, we're going to come in with some ink now and a stencil and I really want to make sure that I don't smudge this. So, belt and braces time, out with the heat gun and just give it a quick front and back. Talk amongst yourselves, have a sip of your brew. Now, for the stencil to go behind this one, I've chosen this lovely stencil here, and this is called Flurry. And I just thought, with it being sort of leaves, and I'm going to turn this round, and it's a lovely size, this. It means I can position it, and I almost want the leaves to flow this way. So again, just spend your time getting it so it looks nice. We've got these gorgeous shapes as well. I like those. Right, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to come in with my Elements ink pad and I've gone for this lovely Lime Punch, this zesty colour. Now I'm just going to wipe my stencil brush on my Inky Binky because I think I used a darker colour. I think I had a bit of Bermuda on here. So I'll just clean that up a little. Right, sleeves up. So again, just take some off on my lid. And I just want it darker in the corner. But again, it's a nice light touch, remember. We're just tickling. So we're just going to start in the corner and along the edge because I want those darker. And I've got more ink on my stencil brush. And then as I come into the design, I'm just coming lighter lighter tickle tickle now i can see if i wanted to avoid where i'd stamped i can see through the stencil but i'm quite happy having my stencil work over but it's coming nice and light up here so i know it's going to be light around the sentiment so let's lift it up and have a look yeah that's lovely i love that difference in color i'm just going to add a tiny bit more here and again i'm not inking up again i'm just tickling Tickle, tickle, tickle. Gently, gently does it. Yes. And I'm happy with that. And if I bring that, can you see? So we've got it darker here, going lighter into that top corner. And again, that gentle tickling, you use less ink. So your ink will last longer. Now, don't forget, we've got that beautiful ink on there. So I did cut myself another piece of card. I'm going to... Right, sorry, Eric. 
Oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> He's asleep and that did actually just wake him up. So let's see if we can get a bit of background. I don't know if the microphone picked that up. He gave such a big sigh then. So for those of you who are new, Eric's my black Labrador. <laughs> and he sits by my craft table. Quite often he's under my craft table, but today he's just at the side of it. So let's see if we've got a, a bonus background here while we've been cleaning our stencil up. Oh, yes. Look at that. Let me just... Let me wipe that now. And also it'll give this time just to dry a little. And I would recommend don't force this with your heat too. Let it dry naturally. You'll get a much better. But look at that. As that dries, that is going to give you... Probably have it that way. Or maybe that way. Well, actually, that way is probably nice. That is going to give you such a lovely, lovely background. So we'll put that again to one side. Now I have got a, a, I know you always ask me about these backgrounds, so I have got one stamped up, which I'll, I'll show you at the end. From when I made my original, I had a real good play and stamped one up to show you. So if we concentrate on this now, so we've got our basis of our design and I'm going to come in with my acrylic spray. And again, I'm just going to give it a nice shake. And I've got myself, oh, not my light, I'm sorry. You will get a professional one day. And what I love to do is just add some into my little palette here. Now you can use, there are uh, little things called pipettes and you can pipette some out, but move your work. But I'm just going to tip some out. So I'm going to take my lid off. I could spray some, but for me, I don't want to spray it everywhere. So I'm just going to add a drop in here. And again, I am stingy. Need to be mindful just to wipe round here. Always make sure you wipe things. And this is why I'm not on my Lavinia craft mat in case I spill any. And what I'm going to do is we're going to use this for painting. But while we're at it, we're going to add some of the lovely mica. Now again, give this a good shake. And I just want to check all my mica, which it has, look, is all mixed in. And again, I'm just going to tip a little. And I would use this palette all day. And again, wipe. And pop my lid back on. And then what I've got is I've got my Lavinia, as you know, my favourite, my number one. And that's in my water pot. And I've got my piece of kitchen towel to lean on and we're just going to now a little tip I always just sort of mix with my brush especially if you've left the colour sometimes if I go and have a brew in the garden and come back um, I just remix the colours and again remember twist your brush keep it that lovely point and then all we're going to do is paint in Our lovely seed heads now I may go quiet because honestly this is so relaxing but you get such a lovely vibrant color and anybody who I know a few ladies have messaged saying that when they color with pencils or sometimes with pens with felt tip pens various different brands they get lines and this is an ideal way if you're one of those ladies that you'll get fabulous results and dare I say for very little effort and again you will take longer you know me I'm always conscious of uh, keeping you too long and again I'm just working my way around each area I tend to do the um painting the furthest away first and then walk, work back towards me just so I've less chance of actually putting my hand in the area where I've painted. I'm hoping you can you can see 
you know me, I'm liable to just enjoy myself and go completely out of shot. And the sprays will last you for so long. As I say, maybe have a have a, a couple of hours spraying backgrounds and then just stamp yourself some designs and just have some lovely time painting. And don't worry if you've got any left in here at the end of the day. I just tip it, literally, onto my card, add some water, splodge it around, make backgrounds. And how quick was that? And you get the most. Again, so this is the acrylic I'm using. So that is going to dry. Now, if I wanted, I could come back in at the base look here and add a little bit of shade. So just come back in with a second little amount just at the base where I want a little bit of shade. And again, I'm being mindful to turn my card. But it's amazing how quickly it dries. And what's lost is you could stamp yourself, say, a few tags up, a few backgrounds. Did you, did you shout then? Because I missed that one. But for me, the colour is so vibrant. I mean, I'm so sad. I even love the way it dries in, in my palette. And don't forget, you can mix the colours. So I'm just going to put my paintbrush back in there. Now, just to show you how quickly it dries, I've got my white pen here. Let me grab a piece of card and check it's working. And I'm just going to add some highlights. So first of all, I'll do it on the silhouette because obviously the ink's dry there. But then I can add it, look, if I lift that up, look, on our painted seed heads. So that's how quick that has dried in that I can add the white highlights with my gel pen. And again, doesn't that make all the difference? So just to finish off this design, I wanted to add some little splats. Now, I could have gone for my orange acrylic paint, but I really wanted to add some mica. And as you can see on the finished one, I love the way they dry because they're not perfect little splats. I love the shape. So I've got my fan brush in water and I'm going to take that out. And then just add a little bit of this gorgeous mica that I put in here. And again, this is why I'm on my non-stick craft mat, just because I'm going to be splatting the mica. Now, I don't want to overcook it. There we go. That's enough. And then wipe that up. And if I can bring that up to show you, as this dries... Now, how quick and effective was that? I mean, honestly, that is so... I'm really hoping you have a go because I've just had such fun playing with these. Now, I did promise you a little... And I'm just leaning at the back. So, this was the background. Look how that's dried that we made. That's our free background this morning from cleaning our stencil. Now, this is what I created with the one. So, you can see that free in the background and all I've done here is stamped and then I've added my other mica mineral is this blue moon and I've just sprayed a little bit at the bottom again you don't have to spray it everywhere so I've just sprayed it at the base where we've got the blue bells lifted my card up and let it drip down and then added a little bit watercolor painting around the design again so that I've got two cards I've got my free one cleaning my stencil and the one that we created and I've still got plenty of um, my sprays in here ready to paint another design I have to say I've just stamped the honeysuckle stamp and that is going to be beautiful to paint in these so I'm just going to put that to one side because you know me I don't want to knock it over and I'll bring in the original now 
Now, again, it's up to you. I've obviously matted and laid that on the orange. But I have to say, imagine that with some blue card behind it. I think that would be lovely. So, as I say, simple stamping and then just adding more. So, this is painting with the mica, with this one, the Chestnut Bay. And again, I just lost myself. So I'm hoping you have a go. These sprays are absolutely fabulous. Create backgrounds, use them on the gel press, use them with your stencils, and use them for painting. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I nearly got through the whole video then, didn't I, without coughing or my voice going. So I do apologise. Sorry about that. So I'm hoping when you get these sprays, you're going to have a real good play and actually use them in so many different ways. They really are not a one trick pony. They have got so much more up their sleeves. So you take care, everybody. If you share your work, please tag me in. I love to see what you do. And um, let's spread the love. Big hugs to everybody. See you soon. Bye for now.